Hey everyone, welcome back to our DC News. This is the weekly web series where I keep you up to date with all the DC news from the past seven days. Today is episode four and we have a lot of DC news to go through. This past week has been absolutely packed with updates and I've been sharing them as soon as they have come out on my Instagram. And I've rebranded the whole account and it's now in a place I'm really proud of. So if you want to see all the updates as soon as they come out, make sure to go follow me on Instagram. So now let's get into the news. Firstly, we have my favorite update of the week, which is that Deadline have confirmed that DC Studios are creating an animated Blue Beetle series. It will be set in the DCU and follow the events from the first film, and everyone from the first film appears to be returning as well. And I absolutely love this. The first time I saw Blue Beetle was in the animated Batman Brave and the Bold series, and I loved him, and I did actually like the movie too. It unfortunately didn't do very well at the box office at all, but that was expected with how the DCEU was failing and ending. But Gunn clearly believes in the character, and I think an animated show is the best way to transfer him fully into the DCU. I've seen that some people are confused as to how the first movie is now in the DCU when it was made to be a part of the DCEU. Well, firstly, Walter Hamada had no interest in making these movies feel connected, and honestly, he was an absolute disgrace to DC. So Blue Beetle actually has no specific connection to the DCEU. There are no DCEU characters that are brought up or shown. He does mention Batman, but we never see Ben Affleck or Keaton, so it really is basically a standalone movie. Now, Gunn mentioned that Blue Beetle would be the first character in the DCU, but Superman will be the first movie, and that has got quite a few people confused as now it looks like the movie will be connected to the DCU. But let me explain. So like with Peacemaker Season 1, the majority of the events from that story will transfer over to the DCU Season 2, but the events that will be forgotten will be anything that is connected to the DCEU, like the Justice League cameo. They're basically using the whole multiverse explanation to allow them to pull the parts of the story over that they want to. To summarize, for some characters, it's a very similar timeline to what their story was in the DCEU, like the smaller characters like Peacemaker, but for others is extremely different, like Superman and Batman for example. They have been completely rebooted so nothing transfers over from the DCEU to the DCU. Hopefully that makes a bit more sense for you guys. I know it is messy, but it's what we are getting and I'm sure after the first couple of projects, the messy starts will be forgotten as we will just be looking forward. But anyway, back to the actual news about Blue Beetle. I think this is a great idea because making this an animated show rather than a live action show or movie will save money and time, which will be needed elsewhere. The first film flopped big time, so risking an entire second movie would be a very bad business decision. Whereas an animated show could be half the price and could really help develop Blue Beetle's story and popularity. It integrates him into the DCU nicely, and the whole cast look to be returning to voice their characters, which Gunn will be doing with every animated project, which is great news as it will make everything feel even more connected. But now let's move on to some Peacemaker updates. Tim Meadows is joining the cast of Season 2 and will be playing Argus agent Langston Fleury. Not only that, but Superbad director Greg Matola will be directing a couple of episodes of Peacemaker Season 2. Now you guys know I didn't like Peacemaker Season 1, specifically for the style and overuse of comedy and persistent use of strong language which to me felt like they were just trying to fill up the script when they had no idea what to actually say. But actually, for the Peacemaker show and the Suicide Squad, I think the stories at their core are great. I actually found both stories really compelling and interesting, but it was just what they were wrapped up in that ruined it for me. I can only handle that kind of humour and language so much, and it felt like both projects just went over the top. 
And I'm not particularly looking forward to season two of Peacemaker, but as with everything in the DCU, I'm keeping an open mind and will judge these shows and movies on the final product. So whilst I'm not looking forward to it, I will watch season two because you never know. The second season may have less of that humor as the characters could be slightly different or have grown since season one. That probably won't be the case, but let me dream. And moving on to another show I am hesitant about, Creature Commandos has been confirmed confirmed to release in December this year on Max. James Gunn also confirmed that the show will follow on from the events of Peacemaker Season 1's ending, saying, The new series picks up directly after our Peacemaker Season 1 finale, which leaves Waller with her hands tied operationally, meaning that she's no longer able to get away with putting human lives on the line to carry out her clandestine morally questionable missions. Instead, she recruits a ragtag band of misfits, not unlike The Suicide Squad and Peacemaker. He goes on to say, It's a cornerstone of the legacy we've been entrusted to carry at DC Studios, and plays an integral role in the vision for our future storytelling. Since taking the reins, our true north has been to bring DC film, TV, animation and gaming into alignment under a single banner and bring a sense of unity and consistency into the DCU as a whole. This frees us to create a range of products that are diverse and compelling and deliver great standalone entertainment experiences on every medium, while also being part of a larger story that we're telling within our unified DCU. Now the second paragraph is great, I really love what he says there, but it's the first paragraph that concerns me and others. First of all, we see that it's connected to season one, which is set in the DCEU, but obviously, as I mentioned earlier, there is a way around it. Whether you like it or not, is up to you, but that is what Gunn is doing. But it's really the final line that concerns me the most. Instead, she recruits a ragtag band of misfits, not unlike the Suicide Squad and Peacemaker. Now that, to me, sounds like he's just doing the same kind of thing that I personally don't like. I didn't like either Suicide Squad movies, and I've already made my views on Peacemaker clear. I just don't see why we are getting yet another project so similar to what we've just had. Someone said on Twitter that as the story is directly connected to Peacemaker and the Suicide Squad, it makes sense for the tones and story to be similar, which is a very fair comment, so maybe the fact that I'm upset that they are using the same formula again is just because I don't like the style, not necessarily that they are using the same formula again. Whereas if they were using a formula that I actually really loved, then I would have been really excited for it, so maybe my issues with this isn't necessarily that they're reusing the same formula, it's just that they're reusing a formula that I don't particularly like, but fortunately for a lot of DC fans, a lot of you guys do. I know the show is just designed to be a small teaser to the DCU, and the universe really kicks off with Superman, but I can't lie, this does feel a little repetitive. I'm hoping Superman will prove that Gunn isn't a one-trick pony, but hearing that Creature Commandos will basically be a group of misfits sounds just like Peacemaker, The Suicide Squad, and The Guardians of the Galaxy. For those of you who love that style, you'll be over the moon, and I'm really happy for you, and hopefully I really enjoy Creature Commandos too. But right now, I find that style sickly sweet, and can only handle so much of that type of entertainment for so long. So I'm not buzzing about this news. However, the way the show is described does give me a little hope. Creature Commandos is described as dark, humorous, but never goofy and unsentimental, adult-themed show with political storylines. So I am glad it won't be goofy like Peacemaker or The Suicide Squad, and that does give me some confidence in enjoying it. The political storylines has worried some people, but I don't think it will be the way they think it is. I think they are fearful that it will be woke by mentioning political storylines, but I don't think that is what it's referring to. I think it is referring to political storylines like how The Suicide Squad had political storylines, with the government trying to cover up what they were doing with Starro. Like I said, I thought the Suicide Squad's and Peacemaker's story were great. Honestly, some of the strongest we've had in the DCEU, but the humour just ruined it for me. If I could have it my way, I would have halved the humour in both projects, and I think I would have liked them far more. But like with the DCU in general, with Creature Commandos, I am cautiously optimistic. 
But now moving on to a good piece of news. James Gunn has confirmed that Matt Reeves is still working on the Batman Part 2, saying it will be ready when Matt is happy with it. Which is good news, but I am worried about the future of that universe with the DCU wanting to be the focus. If Part 2 isn't the end, then I think Part 3 definitely will be. But the way things are going, it looks like Part 3 wouldn't even happen until 2034. James Gunn has also debunked the rumour that an actor has been cast as the DCU's Batman saying, no, we haven't even begun casting for the DCU's Batman. Andy Muschietti is set to direct the film, but as it won't come out until 2027 at the earliest, there is no surprise an actor for Batman hasn't been cast yet. To end the episode, we are talking about some set videos from the Superman movie. We have had an aerial video released by a news network revealing a stunt rehearsal on the beach. Some fans are theorizing that the man in red is the stuntman for Eddie Gathegi, who is playing Mr. Terrific, and the stuntmen who are surrounding him are soldiers for Lex Luthor. The location this is being filmed on is an army camp for Luthor Corp, so the soldiers are most likely working for Lex Luthor. So that's all the news from the past seven days. Quite a lot of updates to go through and apologies for a bit of negativity in this one. Whilst I am optimistic, I am also cautious. Gunn hasn't made DC projects that I love, but I can definitely see where he can really shine. And the idea of the DCU really, really excites me. And in a world full of negativity, I'm gonna try and bring some positivity into it. But obviously, I'm combining that with honesty and realism. But that is all for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. Please make sure to like and subscribe and turn on post notifications so you never miss a video. I hope to see you here again soon, so until then, have a great day. Bye!